The American experiment in self-rule is under assault by anti-democratic forces, and we can't stand idle while our republic is at stake. Let us come together and fight to keep our republic democratic and make true the long-held promise of liberty and justice for all. Citizen Do Good is excited to announce a long-awaited project, Lost Cause Watch. It's going to be a harder-hitting, direct take on what we must do as citizens to bring about the future we were promised. Everything is changed. With the persistence of authoritarian tendencies and the myths that keep us divided. Only divided shall we fail, and only together do we prevail. We'll be taking on the issues of the day and how we can take action to secure our republic for now and for generations of humanity to come, hurtling through space on a rock covered in soil. Lost Cause Watch, a new production by Citizen Do Good coming soon. Stay tuned. Okay, boss. Let's start. In times like these, being a citizen is a big job. Thank you for joining us to celebrate the virtues of self-rule and debate the state of our republic. Welcome to the Citizen's Prerogative Podcast. This is the voice of your nerdy host, Michael Piscatelli, and we are blessed with a co-host whose passion for our republic precedes him everywhere he goes, Raymond Wong Jr. I've got the power! (laughs) All right, now I'm rocking. We are in season two. This should be episode 31 by the time it launches. We're covering the back to basics and we are on the power episode. So um, we're going to be spending most of the time today talking about the power that we need for the future. Power not in the people, but electricity. We're talking about electrical power. Might refine the title of this episode later. I realize power is very broad. Before we dive into this episode, though, we want to give you a little bit of a preview of a new project that we have in the hopper at Citizen Do Good called the Lost Cause Watch. And I think, Ray, you want to share a little bit with the people why we're doing this? This is your unofficial announcement on Lost Cause Watch, a new exciting development from the team here at Citizen Do Good. Uh, I'm excited for it. Uh, because it's a necessary change. Since we've launched uh, Citizens Prerogative and and rather Citizen Do Good itself, uh, the world has changed and people have doubled down on hypocrisy. People have doubled down on lies. And I believe that is a call to action for us to double down on truth. And Citizens Prerogative continues to be focused on solutions and things that are impacting us in policy there is a bigger fight at stake here. And that is where we venture into this watch, this zone. So we hope everyone will join us as we try to fortify truth and fortify justice for all. Thank you, Ray. So everybody stay tuned. Stay tuned and stay ready for the Lost Cause Watch. It'll be coming soon from Citizen Do Good. Of course, we'll tell you where to look when we know where to look. (laughs) <laughs> I'm looking. We're looking for it right now. <laughs> All right. So back to basics. We're talking about electricity and how on earth are we going to do it without killing ourselves? Um, we. I think. I hope it's apparent. Um, probably to listeners. I assume our audience, but um, in general, this grid we're operating on, the current grid, is toast. No pun intended. I mean, the thing is toast. It's. We need to move on smartly we need to build another system that's far more resilient and is far less polluting um and when we talk about pollution i mean we're only going to talk about power today but i i understand anybody who's keeping track on the stats pollution steel production is probably one of the big ones and and methane methane cow farts or whatever we're not going there (laughs) we're just going to focus on where are we getting our energy from where are we getting the electricity to power our uh, electric cars. You think you're going so green. You're buying your Tesla. You think you're doing the right thing. Well, uh, there's costs to that Tesla and its batteries. And and that's just talking about the manufacturing and production of that product. Set that aside. You keep putting electricity into that car. Where do you think it came from? 
probably came from a coal-fired power plant or something that's using fossil fuel to generate electricity. Now in California, you may have opted in and you're getting mostly wind or only wind or something like that. Good for you. But that's not the grid of the future. That's bolting on to the old grid that's failing, right? Right, right. And, and I, I'm glad you brought it to toast. I just, it's a really interesting analogy in my head now, um, because if you think about it, the, the transportation to get the electricity to you is very inefficient, okay? There's something else, you know, you can't touch a power line, right? Because you'll get electrocuted, it'll burn you, whatever. Uh, there's something else you can't touch. Uh, it's a toaster, you can't put you can't put any metal objects into a toaster and electrocute you. It's, 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 there's the same issue with a toaster is that it can, that electricity conduction creates heat, right? It creates that the ability to make the toast. The same thing is happening in those electrical wires above us. They are hot and they are burning off electricity in the form of heat as it gets to your electric car, right? So there is a ton of infrastructure waste because of the old system that you just latched on to, or if you're really wealthy, you get to solder on. <laughs> That's a good analogy. I, I think of it like a, a leaky pressurized water system, right? You know, it's just, it's pressurized to the max so that the energy comes out at your outlet. But like you said, it's leaking out everywhere and for various reasons, but it's, it's old technology. It's a very old technology. We literally have strung wires around the world. Fascinating. So what we're talking about today, um, maybe less, less focus on transmission and more focus on decentralizing, decarbonizing, what will make a more dynamic, multimodal, and thus more resilient energy grid. We're going to talk about it at a very high level. We're looking way down the road. We're not talking about immediately tomorrow. We're talking about what green eventually looks like because it's going to take a few steps for us to get there. Um, hopefully it's a great leap, but we have yet to see that happen. That would require us to muster all of the resources we have at our disposal. And we have yet to actually do that to fight climate change. Funny enough, um, it's almost like at some point we have to wake up and treat it like World War II or World War III, right? right? That's when we convert everything over and we actually try to address it with new technology, science, investments, and productivity. Still not do... quite there. <laughs> Go ahead. No, no. And it doesn't make sense to me. You do what works in your area, right? We're not going to ask Arizona to go and become the breadbasket of America. That's not feasible. But we can ask Arizona to become the solar farm of the world. Mm-hmm. Why can't we work with what we have? Stop wasting water, keeping plants alive in an unnatural environment, and use your square footage for good. I don't think it's very complex. So we're saying that green is not an answer, one size fits all, right? Green and being focused on, on, on that, that, that kind of responsible local uh, green energy means that you look at what works for your region, and then we trade off. The areas that have water, we'll pipe it in, and then we'll send them electricity. It, it just why, why is it not a symbiotic relationship? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and just like we have power production all over the place, well, in distributed places today, we need to bring power production closer to home. <clears throat> That's what's going to make us the most resilient. If you imagine like, can you imagine every household is like a independent, we become an, a, a multicellular organism as a nation because each household becomes its own cell with its own mitochondria inside generating electricity. And, you know, you, <laughs> there I go on the biology spin, but <laughs> this idea that, you know, we, we can also generate electricity and, and contribute to the grid to where it's needed whether it's for manufacturing or things like that. What, a, what an interesting concept. And so then, you know, it's not, when you think about cyber attacks and espionage, you know, there's no one backbone to take out. <laughs> you, you know, that, that's where resiliency comes from. So I realize we, we use that word a lot, but in, in material reality, what it looks like is, is having multiple cells that can fail and the organism lives on, right? <clears throat> Absolutely. And compartmentalization, not of our emotions, but of our 
you know, electrical production and consumption to insulate, you know, one another from any kind of catastrophe as much as possible. Um, it's just a very fundamental shift, a very different idea. And, and it, we don't do it today because of profit. I think um, profit makes you want to centralize things. It makes you want to monopolize things, um, which is why we have antitrust laws. And, and electricity was born out of that system. Let, let us not forget. We're not going to do the whole history here. But I'm sure people have heard of Nikola Tesla and was it General Electric and I forget what's his name. But long story short, the system we operate today is built and operated by tycoons still is. It's not designed to be green. It's not designed to help humanity or the earth or anything like that. So it's time for us to take requirements. We know we have the environment, people. Um, uh, it was built on racism. Um, humans live near power plants. Most of them aren't white. Hmm. Environmental racism. Anyway, I digress. Mm -hmm. These are all things we can fix. <laughs> These are all things we can start to resolve with a good plan, a good plan to move towards together, which is green and hopefully hydrogen based. I mean, we talk about, you know, electrical cars and all of that stuff, but the point is, is we need to create electricity, not from fossil fuels for everything we use electricity for because it's so great. And hydrogen is an amazing source of energy. And ultimately, I believe, and anyone can debate us on this, that is where green ends or where it goes. It can evolve from that point on. But what is truly green, what is truly sustainable, and what truly makes us resilient is on the horizon. And I believe hydrogen is a huge function of that. It is maybe the function that replaces all fossil fuel. Yes. And, it's, and I'm glad we're talking about it here because it's been available for a while, but special interests keep it in the shadow special interests keep it away because it competes with one of the golden childs of the economy which is which is big oil unfortunately so don't be you know hydrogen is not some futuristic distant future ideal this is ready it's ready for prime time and this is a good example of why citizens prerogative exists is because we need to talk about the resistance uh, there is a huge resistance out there that is not allowing us to discuss this as a clear policy. We all deserve hydrogen power. It's clean. I'll let you talk more about that, though. 100% uh, Raymond. Thank you. So we do have some green hydrogen projects. Um, we're trying to keep our eye on these things. It's fast moving. I excuse me, I do not work with or for Bloomberg or anything like that. You may hear me use Bloom Bloomberg a lot, but it tends to be one of the sources that I consume a lot. And I have for a while for various reasons, so I won't go into that. Um, but I will recommend them because they, you know, they're good at looking at industries. They're good at looking verticals, cross verticals, looking at the latest management consulting companies and their findings and even bringing people on to have discussions, insightful discussions about these things materially from a business perspective. So from that vantage point, I would recommend, you know, if you're going to start looking into what projects might be going on around hydrogen and whatnot, Bloomberg has got a nice little pull up um, looking across industries, trying to figure out where the cutting edge of, of sustainability is going to go. So that's food for thought for you all. <clears throat> Excuse me. But a fun fact for today, all the evidence that we have indicates that there is more hydrogen in the universe than any other element. It's been estimated that approximately 90% of all atoms are hydrogen. Boom. <laughs> Plus, um, we already produce approximately 7 million metric tons of hydrogen globally every year for various industrial uses. So... It's not something, like Ray said, it's been around, we've been using it, there are reasons why it hasn't been deployed more effectively in more ways, um, but time is now, time is high for us to start looking at this and investing in what we need to, to start shifting from fossil to hydrogen. And we'll keep looking at tokamak, we'll keep looking at fission, but I get really concerned when we start smashing atoms. Hydrogen power does not is not coming from 
the same type of destructive forces that nuclear and uh, fusion and fission energy comes from. You can still make hydrogen bombs. Obviously, we did that. <clears throat> In America, we'll figure out how to make bombs out of anything. I digress. Posters. Posters. <laughs> Hydrogen um, comes in different flavors right now, uh, just because we're in transition. And hydrogen still pure, purely green hydrogen production is in its infancy. It's still relatively expensive and it's not widely used. And those are all problems that are so easy to fix. Those are just market problems. Those are not technical problems. Those are not feasibility problems. That's just oil is subsidized, hydrogen isn't. Let's be clear. So <laughs> right now we've got gray, blue, and green. We've got a few colors operating out there. Gray hydrogen is still involves fossil fuels in its production. And like I said, the reason why we produce it is for you know industrial uses. So there's a reason to just use the cheapest fuel to produce what you can get. Um, we need to get rid of any incentivization there is to produce hydrogen using fossil fuels. That's a that's a starter. Um, the blue, there's blue hydrogen, just some of the terminology that's new to me, and you know, I hope, I, I'm assuming it'll be new to others as well, and I hope that's the case, otherwise I'm wasting your time. Blue is in between, it's not green, but it's not gray, it's greener than gray, and I don't know my color wheel, but it doesn't seem right. You could keep me honest, Ray. <laughs> blue, somewhere in between gray and green, I don't know. Ultimately, where we want to get is green, fully green hydrogen, no, po no pollution. Imagine when you've established a fully green hydrogen energy process, guess what comes out the tailpipe? Water. <laughs> what a crazy concept. What a crazy concept. Today, we drive around cars with tailpipes, and there's noxious fumes that come out of them. Tomorrow, we could be driving around cars and... They're, rather than water coming out of the tailpipes, hopefully we'd reclaim it and drink it or something, but what a different picture. I don't think your color scale is a waste at all because I did not know it, so this is helpful to me. Uh, I haven't had enough time to think about the color scheme yet, so you'll have to give me some. Maybe in another episode, we'll go sure. over the color scheme. <laughs> I love it. So, you know, on the big side, what's a citizen to do about production? Um, keep keep an eye on what Congress is going to be doing. What What is the Biden administration proposing? Like the, this stuff tends to get a little technical and wonky. Um, so maybe it's hard to keep tabs on. Honestly, I don't have any legislation to point to right now. So I'll go do some more digging yeah, yeah, and see there's where no, there's investments. But, I think it's his infrastructure plan if it ever passes, yeah. right? We would say that we, I think that right now there's nothing to target that's, infrastructure is the big plan, right? Because that funds it. But I would say that when you look at your local governments, when you look at your local policies, especially, and then the federal is where are their subsidies as budget talks are coming mm -hmm. out or you see projects being done in your in your state, do you see federal subsidies coming in? That's where you should probably really kind of look at your local area to be kind of on the ground. So we're always looking for solutions here, you know, uh, in our in our podcast. And I think that more than anything is really looking at what's your local po political because you know, that's really what has the power, right? The states have their power and the state mm -hmm. uh, government has its power. So I would say that you can look at your local policy or see what the federal land bureau is doing in your area. Yeah, generally everything new starts with the states. <laughs> we should have a phrase about that. Everything new starts with the states and then eventually the federal government's like, what are you doing over there? <laughs> mm -hmm. The incubators of democracy. They turns out they're the incubators of everything because there's a lot of stuff cooking right now. Mm -hmm. It's where the people are. And just to bring it home for another quick second. So, you know, your local leaders, where are they putting our dollars? Stop putting them in fossil fuel and let's start subsidizing the future that we all need. Um, also, you know, if you're sitting there and you want to be an entrepreneur, you hate working for other people, you would rather run your own company or solve some problem. This is a like, we were talking about blockchain and stuff like that before. Like if you're not a, a techno wizard genius, want to be a coder or whatever, you get finance. If you're not in finance, you're not in technology. Um, then maybe blockchain isn't your thing. Well, hydrogen 
here we go. Like this is a very mechanical engineering type of, I, I mean, I call it that. Maybe it's closer to chemistry in some cases, but it's the blend between chemistry and, and mechanical engineering closer to, I always it's think of cars. Combustion. It's yeah. still combustion. It's com- It's a combustible fuel. So yeah. we're not, we're not abandoning our roots. Okay. It's just a cleaner boom. So like, if you like cars, if you like equipment, if you like Caterpillar, if you like, <laughs> you know, if you're that type of person and you would want to own a business of the future, then I think hydrogen is kind of something you need to be boning up on. You need to be learning about and, and, and exploring. And if you're one of those people that can get there to the cutting edge, then, then there you are. You're, you're in what state on the ground building that business. I, I would recommend it because if you need any inspiration, we've got some here for you. Yeah. Check out sure. Hyperion. I was so excited. You said it right when I wanted. I, I love cars, Michael. You and I have always been about cars. And I'm so excited that there is actually a, a hydrogen car out there. As I understand, orders are, are available for this thing. It's like real. Yeah, through the website, you can order now. And, and they're not the only ones. I'm just ignorant. There is competition. Hyperion's not the only company betting, putting their, you know, their cards on the future, the final solution, so to speak, in air quotes. Um, there's other companies out there. So go ahead, check it out, look it out. Because Hyperion right now is is doing, you know, is selling like, I don't know how much that car is. It's not for it's not for workers. It's it's for people who have money to invest in this future technology. And the car is amazing. Just go to their website and look at the videos. It's insane. It's what the future, it's the cars we should, we thought we were going to be driving a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, the and, one we've been waiting for. It just doesn't fly, maybe. that's the, We're still yeah. waiting for the flying car, right? Still waiting for that. Though there's one, there's a prototype I saw in operation. They just did their maiden flight. So flying cars are coming. Yes, but those have propellers. Yeah. We're supposed to have hover technology. That's true. Yeah, we'll Not have the hoverboards. Propeller. Yeah, drones. I saw it coming. Okay, thanks a lot, cars. <laughs> Sorry. And it still uses fossil fuels. Hyperion XP1 does not use fossil fuels. It's like a rocket ship. I think it goes 0 to 60 in 2.2 seconds. It's insane. And then I think they claim it has a 1,000-mile tank. You can drive 1,000 miles and then refuel. Wow. I don't, I don't know pressure. how much, yeah, I don't Probably know how much pressure. the tank costs to fill, but <laughs> <laughs> that's the real question. Well, that's why you gotta, you gotta go a thousand miles to get it filled. So that's why they got really good range. You gotta go, you gotta have enough gas to go to work for a to couple of days. To get to the next <laughs> pump, <laughs> to get to the next I'm hydrogen excited. pump. I'm excited. <clears throat> it's very exciting. And, and if you are looking for something that's more affordable, Toyota has a a car in California um, that they were leasing. I don't think you can purchase a hydrogen car, but you can lease a hydrogen car. I think it's called the Miraz, Mira? I don't know. I don't work for Toyota and I don't mean to promote them because I hear that they invest no. their dollars against democracy. It's so smart though that like, because they're against freedom and democracy, it makes complete sense why they would only lease this vehicle because it's a killer. It will kill the auto industry as it exists today because the fuel is so clean. Mm. It doesn't destroy the engines like replaceable parts. You don't need them with hydrogen. The, the, it burns cleaner. The engines don't break down due to the grease and the grime and uh, it's, so on and so forth. Wow, sustainability. You know, the donut model is going to have to come to bear because it can't be an unending profit or growth. Like sustainability requires us to have that circle. <laughs> oh, anyway, so we digress. But this is the, I mean, I think this is for me, for us, it's probably the most exciting part of this episode. <laughs> um, although, you know, I, I, I've learned a lot about how we produce steel using so much coal because of the heat but you can but but hydrogen you can use hydrogen technology to heat furnaces to make steel and it's just amazing to see all the industries this can disrupt um which is part of the reason why the bloomberg part of bloomberg's thing will probably end up in the episode when we release it um on the website just because it's neat to see how hydrogen can disrupt everywhere fossil fuel is operating today it's very strange and exciting. Um, so why don't we use it? Oh, spaceships. Yeah, I don't have much to talk about spaceships, but that's Hyperion. I believe Hyperion's long-term mission is to go to space with hydrogen. 
good because it's too dirty the way we do it right now right now we dump a ton of pollutants in to get off the rock (laughs) we really do and a quick tidbit on that too oh what time is it we probably have to have a mid-roll we're over yeah you're over oh i'm so excited let's do a quick mid-roll time for our message from our sponsor citizen do good Even though you've heard it before, it's still true. The war is never over and every battle counts. I know you are tirelessly demonstrating good citizenry on the daily through actions and words, and you donate your time and your money to causes that count. Thank you. The time is now to deeply re-examine our current implementation of governance for the dawning of a new day. We're a proud sponsor of the Citizens Prerogative Podcast, a major partner in spreading the good word about civic love and the power of change for us all. At Citizen Do Good, we want to empower all citizens to participate in their republic in a reconstructive way. With that goal in mind, we need your help to stay on mission and grow this community. Please rate the podcast with five stars on iTunes through the app on the web or on your device. If you don't feel you can give us five stars, let us know why on our sponsor's Facebook page, Citizen Do Good. Also, make sure you join our newsletter at citizendogood.com. You'll get updates every couple months on our antics, not just the podcast. While you're there, check out the shop, which has specialty merch and provides a way to make a one-time contribution that helps us pay for production and for hosting. Feel free to share any suggestions you have directly through the Contact Us page. Thanks for your support. You know, I'm uh, reading through the uh, notes here and because just now, because you know how diligently I always look through the notes before (laughs) every show. Uh, but I'm looking through them now and I realize you don't really mention the danger. And I think it behooves us to just segue really quick. Can you talk to us about there is some danger with hydrogen? It's not all good news, right, Mike? Yeah, you know, you and I think like that bullet I deleted at the last minute before I went to sleep last night. Um, <laughs> in that bullet, I mention the Hindenburg. I think that's the the best example of you know when we get a little ahead of our britches with new technology sure sure Um, you didn't have to bring up that example i would have deleted that part of the bullet but still left the (laughs) bullet by the way well i thought you know you did such a nice segue i might as well blow it up oh sorry Literally. literally I shouldn't be making jokes. I'm sorry. No pun intended. Ancestors of the Hindenburg tragedy are going to be suing me left and right. Apologies. Um, apologies. So for anybody who's not familiar with what I'm talking about, you can go look it up on the internet. Um, the Hindenburg, it was a blimp filled with hydrogen gas and it went down in a blaze of glory. I think you know what your image is going to be for the episode. Um, and, you know, yeah, we'll try, I, we'll try to be honorable. I am trying to sell hydrogen, so I won't be doing that. <laughs> I mean, I'm not literally trying to sell hydrogen. I don't own it. I have no stakes in that game. Not yet, anyway. You're not Mr. Hydrogen. I'm I'm not not, terrified. I am not Mr. Hydrogen. I haven't even invested. So, um, but I am trying to sell this concept for us to open our minds. I digress. Thank you. Hydrogen, yeah, it's it's dangerous. It's really light, which is great. um, But it's also flammable. It's way more flammable when it's combined with air than petroleum natural gas any of the things that we burn today and by the way burning is a function of oxygen of air um so hydrogen in it, it, it is very flammable in any environment with air and as you know our whole planet is blanketed in a thin layer of that so we tend to operate inside of it So that's one of the biggest challenges from a technical perspective, from a functional and technology perspective, um, is especially with the fuel cell technology. I would say maybe Toyota doesn't want to sell their hydrogen car because they don't know what the long-term viability is of the fuel cell technology. And the fuel cells are critical because they are what makes it stable. So why a car can get into a car crash and not explode like the Hindenburg is because of these fuel cells. Um, And they have to build the fuel cells to compartmentalize uh, the hydrogen and whatnot perfectly well, right? To avoid those types of things. Because it's basically an unmitigated release of hydrogen with 
with oxygen, if that happens, you get an explosion. But if you mitigate the release, just like natural gas, right? If natural gas leaks slowly into the air, you don't get a fire. <laughs> but if your pipeline explodes, you melt an entire town, San Bruno. Uh, again, I digress. So, you know, these things, we don't have the perfect technologies um, even today for fossil fuels, but we live with it. This is another one of those things at some point, we're just going to have to stop using fossil fuel and start using hydrogen. The well, good news is the technology is getting there, right? right? We have nanotechnology. We're moving into a world where potentially new materials are going to be coming out of the labs built on, um, what am I thinking of? What's that new preen? It's 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 so small that I I'm not aware of it yet. I just haven't seen it. It's nano. Yeah, it's these carbon nanotubes. I forget what it's made out of. Graphene. That's the term I'm looking for. Mm. This graphene stuff is going to be pretty amazing, and we'll see what it can do. What kind of materials we're going to be able to create out of it. The good news is is like Hyperion and other companies, Toyota, have already you know built fuel cell technology. It works. They're proving it. But we got to bring the costs down um, the safety is getting there we can start we can do this stuff safely we do fossil fuel safely and they're dangerous Whoa. well i mean let's be let's be clear that minute. sorry you, yeah but due to due to lobbyists and the focus of our government our you know your stove your gas burning stove should have a nice warning on it should probably be tested by the emissions uh, officials in your state because you're basically standing over a smoke gener a smokestack for lack of a better. I mean, you think, oh, it's gas, it's clean, it's natural. No, it's it's still burning. It's it's releasing a toxic fuel into your house consistently via pilot pilot light. But when you're cooking and standing right over it, you might as well be right behind your car inhaling that fumes it, it is it is the same stuff coming out of your vehicle it is an exhaust and that's why you know hydrogen has its risks but its benefits to our health mm. are are good yeah it's 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 proper it has a place a hundred percent because it's a process we will have already learned to control and it doesn't create anything gross like the water is what comes out of these tailpipes of these vehicles, right? I mean, hydrogen, think about hydrogen. It's H2O is water. It's two hydrogens and oxygen put together, right? So, I mean, we, we're made out of it <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's, it's just one of those things that's abundant in the universe. We can work with it. It can generate electricity for us and it won't pollute the environment unlike fission or fusion or any of these other cockamamie schemes we've got going on. For profit's and it, sake, yeah. and it's not finite, you know. Like it's unlike the yeah. oil that we're currently using. It's it's got a limited life. And what's unfair is that people are pumping this stuff out of the earth and charging us for it. Like this is our planet. Like what gives them the right just because they had stake, they had the lobbyists? It gives that oil company the right just because they got there first. That's over. The, I thought those days were dead with colonialism, but it's not. It's still alive in a well with corporate cronyism and we see a space race to steal more resources more land for corporate gain and, and it's citizens it's time to take back life liberty and the pursuit of happiness means i get my planet to keep living as long as i possibly can keep it sustained keep it whole keep it clean with clean power can't forget more than anything it's a power and it's a race because we're in competition right we're, we're not you know we've got plenty of people coming at this game um, and looking at this technology because it's been around oh yeah the whole world is in the race right now europe europe and uh china and all of them because everybody knows where they need to go and if you look at any of those command economies out there you know china for instance it knows how to muster itself to turn that ship so we've got to get wise to it and we need to pay attention to infrastructure infrastructure spending so that we're building the right future for ourselves and for our prodigy yeah and we have to start sooner mike because uh china does it without the uh, bill of rights in their way so mm. they, they just they just railroad everyone 
Um, you know, they can build trains really easily when they can knock down any building they want. So it's different in China. They don't have the same disadvantage. It's harder to do work here in America. We have to work now. We have to start now. We don't have time to play catch up. Not at all. So keep an eye out for those investments. We need to invest in this technology even further and anything that we can do to make research um, and affordability at a mass scale come to bear because this thing, this, this is our future. We need to bring it about. The beauty of it is, is we can. It, it really just looks like a function of money at this point in investment. So um, one of the issues is that hydrogen currently costs, you know, three times as much as natural gas in the U.S. And uh, green hydrogen is even more expensive. So, but, but cost is a function of markets. An investment, right? Do the dollars, this whole money system, finance system, we created it for a purpose. So we can just tweak it, stop, stop giving so much money to fossil fuels, give it to this other stuff, bring down the cost, get the investment going. I have here um, a note from a McKinsey study. Uh, they estimated by 2030, the U.S. hydrogen economy could generate 140 billion dollars and support 700,000 jobs in the U.S. I think that's a worthy investment for our future, if you ask me. And um, that's assuming, you know, Europe and China don't beat us to it. Germany right now is already beginning to heavily subsidize key areas to stimulate development in green hydrogen specifically and wean itself off of its reliance from natural gas coming out of Russia. So they, they have political, environmental, they, ha they have many reasons in Germany and Europe to wean themselves off of fossil fuels. Um, for geopolitical reasons, so we we need to get on we need to get on the ball here, and that's all I got. It's a lot, and it's powerful, and and I just thank you for bringing it forward. And I think that you know what we continue to focus on is, and we're not going to. I don't think we're going to be jumping around a ton, folks. Like we we want to focus on key solutions. We're all for rewilding. We're all for hydrogen. These are real world solutions that have a web of connection. And we're just going to continue to bring to you that web of connection. When we talk about how do you pay for this? Because I like the I like the saying seven, you know, just shy of a million jobs there, but it's going to be huge when we really go into rethinking our economy and having conscious pipelines. Decentralization is going to cause the need for a lot more jobs and a lot more infrastructure. For us to have these gardens and front yards when we talk about rewilding stuff before for us to have solar panels on the roofs on every home it's all going to turn into a, a self-conductive economy that's just going to boom towards the sky and we need it because job replacement will be needed with with all of the robotics and such so i, I hope you feel that we're building a power center of um, ideas and, and and hydrogen is a good solution we're looking for someone to tell us another one. Amen. We have been your hosts. Thank you to Mr. Raymond Wong Jr. And thank you, Mr. Piscatelli. I surely hope that my next car is a hydrogen one. Hmm. Mm, me too. It's been something, that's for sure. For information on this and other episodes, head over to citizenduga.com and click on podcast. While you're there, hit up our Contact Us page and leave us a message. We would love to hear from the community. We'd like to give special thanks to you, our listeners. We save the best for last. You are the best. You have been for years. Thank you for your support. We know it's painful and we love you. Intro music sampled from OK Class by Ozzy Jock under Creative Commons license through freemusicarchive.org. Other music provided royalty-free through Fizzly and Studios, Inc. <laughs>